This is the compound of Joyce Myers. She's the most famous female preacher in the United States and probably the world. At the time of the Senate investigation that she was under, she had this compound for her and her kids, all paid for by the ministry. Her house was uh, house number one. It's a 10,000 square foot home purchased for $795,000, and then they spent another $1.1 million remodeling it. House number two is a 4,000 square foot home purchased for $725,000. House number three is a 5,000 square foot home purchased for $400,000. Then they spent another $250,000 to remodel it. House number four is a 2,358 square foot home purchased for $350,000. And another $3,000 spent for improvements. And house number five is a 2,000 square foot home for $200,000 with uh, 33000 spent in home improvements. So whichever kid got that home, he got screwed. But anyway, plus you get the little guest house with the arrow there for all their guests. She also says that all the bills for all the homes are paid by the ministry, such as electric, phone, cable, water, lawn maintenance, pool maintenance, any repairs. She says this is because they are all too busy with their schedule to worry about such things. Recently, she also bought a couple of other houses, and here they are in the picture. Nice homes. This is the ministry headquarters that cost $20 million to build. Now keep in mind, she travels to stadiums. So why spend so much money on a headquarters? Plus, uh, you know, she likes expensive antiques. And here's just a few things she brought up. Uh, during the Senate investigation that she bought for her new building. She bought a $23,000 marble-topped commode. Now, this isn't a toilet. This is a, a uh, it's like a makeup table or some antique stupid-ass table for $23,000. She spent $30,000 on a round table. She spent $11,219 on a French clock. $19,000 on a pair of Dresden vases. 18500 on six French crystal vases, $8,000 on a porcelain depicting the nativity, $11,600 for two curio cabinets, $5,700 for a porcelain crucifix, $5,200 for a pair of German porcelain vases, $14,000 on custom office bookcases, $6,300 on an eagle sculpture on a pedestal. And get this, guys, $49,000 on a conference table and chairs for her meeting room. $49,000. $44,000 for the woodwork in her and her husband's office. And in all, nearly $5.7 million worth of furniture artwork, glassware, and the latest equipment and machinery to fill the 158,000 square foot building. $440,000 for vehicles for the ministry. $10 million on a jet. And when she was asked, why not fly coach? She said, with the schedule I have, that would just wear me out. And to this I would remind her of Philippians 4.13. It reads, I can do all things through Christ. Again, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I guess Christ or God couldn't help her with her schedule, so she needed a private jet. Myers told an audience in Detroit in September, when this article was written, I don't know what year, I'm living in my reward now, and if you stay in your faith, you are going to get paid. She got her start with an honorary doctorate in divinity from Oral Roberts University in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and for some time was also on the board of directors. Now, Oral Roberts is the guy back in 1975 that said he needed $8 million to be donated to his TV ministry for his cancer healing building, or God was going to kill him and take him home. He got the money totaling $8 million. However, the project went bankrupt. No one knows where the money went. And also, ironically, the health and wealth preacher, who wears glasses, by the way, teaches you're supposed to be 100% healthy, but wears glasses, died of cancer. 
And that last million dollars he got to finally make up the eight million was donated by a guy who owned professional or these dog tracks where they race dogs, where they abuse dogs, where they race them for money. That's how he got his last million, and he gladly took it. Now, let's get back to Joyce Myers. To me, it's very clear she spends a lot of money on her lavish lifestyle, which Joyce Myers calls being blessed. One article said that she gives over $800,000 a month to charitable organizations. That's a lot of money. I mean, I, at first you get excited. She actually does give a lot of money to charitable organizations, over $800,000 a month. However, the ministry also brought in over $80 million that year. So where did the other $70 million roughly go? Joyce Myers has authored over 80 books in 80 different languages. So I guess the complete Word of God, also known as the Bible, wasn't enough. Plus, ironically, she sells each one of her books for about the same price as the complete book, uh, a complete Bible, which has 66 books, or 80, depending on which Bible you want to buy. And the sad thing is, women and some men will read two or three or more of her books, but never read the entire Bible. Now, she recently opted out of her $900,000 a year salary and lowered it to a mere, meager, humble $250,000 salary. Keep in mind, all expenses paid, travel, housing, mansions, cars, boats, whatever, that's all paid for, plus her salary of a meager $250,000. You see what she did? She changed her income status on her book sales from a nonprofit to a for-profit so that she can start collecting royalties for all her books instead. And it makes you wonder just how much those royalties are when millions are sold in places like Walmart or Amazon. You know, every day they're being sold, so millions are sold each year. And the rumor was that Joel Olstein got $13 million dollars for an advance on his first book, wonder what she's getting for hers. She also pays her husband a little salary. It's not much, to, you know, because he helps out with the ministry. Um, so she pays him a, a, a little salary because he's working for the Lord and sacrificing. But um, so she only pays him four hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year to help. You see, she used the, the ministry money to go on TV, to travel the world, to build up her name. She started off small, small churches, then bigger venues. She built up her name. Then she started a TV show. And now she's cashing in. Now she's saying, hey, look, these are my books. I wrote them. Uh, I think I deserve to keep the money from them. But nobody would know who Joyce Myers was if it wasn't for this ministry machine paying for her to travel and inspire and enlighten and encourage women all over. And that's great. You can encourage them. But when she says, we're gonna, we need to help people, and you need to give me your money. We need to help you know, the poor and the sick. Trust me, she's helping herself a whole lot more. Uh, Joyce Myers also is said to have a house in Cape Cod and also bought a lakefront home in Port Sima. She also bought two watercraft similar to jet skis and a $105,000 crown line boat painted red, white, and blue named the Patriot. Those were all uh, other things that came up during the Senate investigation. And the latest rumor is that she bought a million-dollar yacht, but I can't verify that, so who really knows? Here's what some reporters said a, a conference is like, and for some of you watching this, you've probably been there, you probably know, but they said her biggest followers are white women over 30, but all ages and races are represented. Uh... The relatively few men in the crowd are, uh, seem to be accompanying wives or girlfriends, and there's children that do come along from time to time play in the aisles. After bags and purses are checked by security, Myers volunteers hand the followers a 20-page catalog listing Myers products for sale. Just a few steps inside the arena will follow 100-foot tables or you know a long table or multiple tables uh, with items for sale. People crowd them jockeying for places to get in there and buy a CD or an audio tape or books. And, and everything ranges from a little pocket-sized little book for $3 to a $110 video audio package. And the average cost of a DVD is 22 bucks. Her workers, flown in from St. Louis, handle the sales, keeping 10 credit card machines going. Remember, stay out of debt, guys, but bring your credit card to buy my stuff. 
Myers Ministry also depends on more than 100 volunteers from local ministries to help work her conferences. So what they do is they call up a church and say, Myers is coming to town, you want to come help her and volunteer and support God? Yeah, I'll support God, which is her, and I'll come work there for free, and maybe you can meet her, maybe she'll shake your hand, maybe she'll hand you a free book or something. But you get to help God's mission why she flies home in a $10 million jet to a mansion, one of her mansions, and most, a lot of the money that she's making is being spent directly on her and her family. Yes, she's helping people, but if this was any other charitable organization and they were spending millions and millions and millions of dollars on their personal lifestyle and buying ridiculous artwork and crappy paintings or vases, they we would all have a problem with it. So if you love her, please take her name away and pretend she's a politician for a minute, and I promise you, you'll see the light. Okay. On each side of the stage at her uh, ministry, there'll be a large video display, and it'll, it'll flash a message to the audience, buy $500 worth of products and get $100 free. The music now playing is from our Free at Last CD and is available in the product table. The tapes of these sessions can be ordered at the product table, so she's constantly plugging more stuff to sell. She says things like sowing and reaping is a law, and Myers told a Buffalo audience, if you sow, you will reap. You will reap. And she said, I believe stingy people are very unhappy people. I want you to give your best offering. I believe one person could write a check to cover all the expenses of this conference. Well, that's nice. Myers often stands on stage and has her, you know, has her products. In Atlanta, she, she held an enormous like basket or bag overflowing with like 50 books and yelled out, Free! This is free for the first $1,000 offering. <laughs> Amazing. Now, Christopher Coleman was the security chief for the televangelist Joyce Myers and was found guilty of murder. He murdered his family. Coleman was convicted of strangling his wife and two sons who were 11 and 9 back in 2009. Coleman was the son of a pastor and had called police from a gym on May 5, 2009 and asked the police officer who had investigated prior threats related to the family to check on them after calls to the house allegedly went unanswered. Coleman resigned soon after from his position at Joyce Meyer's ministry after being questioned about the violation of the ministry's moral conduct policy. He had served as a bodyguard to Myers while she traveled and uh, pulled into the case. Myers testified that she was unaware that Coleman was having an affair the bodyguard, Christian man, the son of a pastor, protecting Myers, was having an affair, and she was unaware of it. <clears throat> Prosecutors argued that Coleman carried out the murder to keep his high-profile job and continue his relationship with the other woman, who was his wife's friend. There was a lawsuit filed blaming the ministry, saying the ministry should have been aware of Coleman being a threat because, you see, he was sending messages, threatening messages, from his laptop and his cell phone that was issued by the ministry. Now, when Joyce Myers gets on TV or on stage and says, I feel somebody here has got a backache and I'm praying for it right now and it's gone. I feel somebody, if you've got a, a stomach problem, I, I can sense it, it's gone. Why can't you sense, Joyce Myers, that your bodyguard is having an affair and going to murder his two children and his wife? Where's your prophetic hearing from God there? Can you please explain that? And look, just because someone says really nice, smart things or quotes the good things out of the Bible, and I'm going to be honest with you, there are some great, hey, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Uh, don't kill people and don't steal people's crap. That's common sense. That's not some magic. But just because somebody steals a quote from another pastor or preacher or says something out of the Bible, that doesn't mean... They are honest or good people. She teaches things like Christians are little gods and that Jesus went to hell as only a man and was tortured by Satan for three days. Yay, he was tortured. He was down there in hell being whipped and bruised. Now some doctrines teach that. But if, if Jesus went to hell and if Jesus died 
didn't the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, didn't the Trinity collapse? Doesn't God fall apart? Isn't God missing a part of him? Isn't that kind of weird? But that's a whole different teaching. Now, she was taught by a money-hungry preacher named Oral Roberts, who knew how to get money from a crowd, and she's doing the exact same thing right in front of your face. Women scream and cheer for her, not even realizing they are idolizing her, which is against what the Bible teaches in the first place. And look, if you think I'm being harsh, then do the research yourself. But if you still think she's some great lady, after you see how much money she's really spending on herself, then fine. If you need people like that in your life to motivate you, if they encourage you and you're inspired by that, by all means, go for it. But I'm not buying it. She's a fraud. Thank you.